great to welcome you again at our online experience and it's such a privilege to share the word with you and to minister to you and we trust you're going to have a wonderful time with us today. Uh, we have the wonderful Jenny Cameron that's going to share the word with us and she's got a friend that's going to bring a testimony and then we will have a fantastic worship song. So enjoy the service with us. For those of you who are partners, Please remember that we will be having our annual general meeting soon. You would have received the letter already. So be aware of the contents of that letter and prepare yourself well. We're looking forward to making great decisions. God bless you. Enjoy the service. And may you experience Him empowering you to be His presence in every place. That's the mission of our church. is to take people into a space where they can follow Christ love people, serve the environment of our city, but then also grow and plant faith communities. And that's how we as Bedeck Church of Christ would be His presence in every place. Sit back, enjoy the word and the worship, and get some investment into your spiritual life today that will take you far. God bless you. We love you and we miss you. Cheers. Hey guys, it is so good to be here with you today. For those who don't know me, my name is Jenny and I'm really excited to be sharing this last part of our Loving People series with you today. So, so far we've looked at transactional relationships, we've looked at occasional relationships and then in the last two weeks we've looked at the fight to feel valued. But this week we are going to be looking at superficial relationships. You know, in a season like we are currently in, it is so important that we are working at having deeper relationships with people. All relationships start at a superficial level. They all start at a very surface level. But all of us really desire to go from a shallow beginning of a relationship into something deeper. The Oxford Dictionary puts the term superficial like this existing or occurring at or on the surface, not thorough, deep or complete, lacking depth of character or understanding. And I think this last word understanding is absolutely key in realising what it is that a superficial relationship is lacking. You know, when we have a deep connection with somebody. There's not only a sense of understanding, but that understanding then leads to acceptance. So why do we stay at the shallow end of the pool? Why don't we like to go deeper? It's because it's safe, right? We feel safe when it's shallow. We can touch the surface. We can touch the bottom. It's safe. We don't fear we fear rejection. That's why we don't want to go deeper. We fear being hurt. We fear being vulnerable. At the deep end, it requires vulnerability. It requires us to take off the mask, to be real, to be raw. And that sometimes can be really scary. It can be really intimidating. And so we like to stay at the shallow end. Well, there are so many examples that I could think of, of superficial relationships, and I'm sure you could too. But I'll give you a few examples. How about on a Sunday morning or a Saturday evening when we come here to church? It can be so easy to fall into the trap of, hi, how are you going? And a whole bunch of small talk and then see you later. It almost falls into the occasional relationships, but where we just engage in a ton of small talk, but don't really journey with people. It just becomes a very surface level conversation week in, week out. Or how about on social media? We live in a world where we are told that the more likes you get, the more Facebook friends you have, the more Instagram followers you have means you have more relationships, the more popular you are. 
But the reality is most of those numbers on your Facebook account, on your Instagram account, you probably haven't had a real conversation with them in a long time. You know they got that job promotion, but you only know that because you saw a post, not because you had a real conversation with them. Or social media itself actually promotes us being superficial. It is a highlight reel. Have you ever noticed that when you've looked through someone's Instagram account or Facebook page? It's full of highlights. It's all the good stuff but you don't see the, the bits that people don't want you to see. You don't see the struggles. You don't see the real them. It's this false perception mask of who they are. It's a highlight reel. And so living in this world that promotes a quantity of relationships rather than quality relationships it would be so much better to just have a few relationships of good quality than to have a thousand Facebook friends who you don't really talk to. So right now we're gonna hear from one of our amazing young adults, Bethy Hargraves. She's been on a real journey herself. She really feared vulnerability. And as a result, she really struggled to open up to people and therefore go deeper with people. So let's have a little listen to what Bethany has to share. Hi guys, my name is Bethany and I'm just here to share a little bit about my story with my fear of vulnerability and how I was able to overcome that. In my short life, I've had a number of relationships and friendships that have misused my trust and people who haven't seen me in the way that I should have been represented um, due to just misunderstandings and my intentions being um, put in the wrong light. So as a result of this, I got in a bad uh, mental state and I, eventually started to just shut myself off to, to people and become numb in my emotions because I was just anticipating another rejection um, and another person to misunderstand me. I didn't realize how bad my pattern of thinking had become until I got into a relationship three years ago and my partner would try to give me compliments and ask me how I am and have these deep connections and deep conversations with me that I just couldn't respond to because it meant I had to actually think about where I was in that in that time and it and I wasn't in a good space so after this I had the support of him and my family and I ended up going to YWAM over in New Zealand so that's youth with a mission so I did a medical compassion course over there and a part of this course we addressed the issue of vulnerability and how there is such a stigma around it and a fear around it that we always have to be tough and we always have to have it all together but at the end of the day there is so much strength and courage that comes with being real and comes with being vulnerable and how it actually connects us and it brings us better um, together as a community and and with um, partnerships and family and just how that when there's unity there's blessings and and that comes with being real and raw and showing the hard parts of our lives and so I um, yeah I went over there with this main point of trying to address this and trying to say that I don't want to wear these masks anymore I don't want to be misrepresented and people to see me um, a certain way when that's not who I truly am and that's not how I'm created to be. And so at the end of this, I just realized that there was this burden that was lifted when I addressed all these issues and I got down to the root cause of it. And yes, it was so, so hard and it was, um, it was, it was uncomfortable, honestly, but at the end, so much freedom and so much, um, just joy came out of this season and, and this um, decision to just make things right and coming back um, from this journey away, I've been able to have such an open and trusting relationship with my partner. My family finally see the real me without me hiding behind um, pretend masks and thinking that everything's okay all the time, but actually just being um, real with people and just letting people know that it's actually okay to ask for help and it's okay to reach out and to have those conversations because it just brings such a deeper level of uh, relationships. 
and allowing people to help you in those times of need. So I just encourage you today that if this is something you're struggling with, I know it is super, super hard to address it and to take that first step into asking for help or to um, having that awkward conversation with your partner or your family member if you're not doing okay, or if you want just a more intellectual um, conversation to happen around the home, but I can just guarantee that there is so many um, fruits that will come out of this and so much uh, love and joy that will come as well. So I just encourage you to take that step today and, um, and yeah, just enjoy your friendships and enjoy your relationships. And I hope you have an awesome time. Thanks. Beth struggled with being vulnerable. This prevented her going deeper in her relationships. She wore a mask so that she could protect herself. She put up walls so that people couldn't get in. But I want to read to you a verse from Ephesians chapter 3 verses 17 to 19. And this is what it says. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the full measure of all the fullness of God. There's a few key parts of this verse that I want to point out to you. The first is that we are rooted and established in Christ. When we are rooted and established in Christ, in his love, it becomes our foundation. And when he is our foundation, when we go into other relationships with people, we can then bring Christ into that relationship. When we are rooted and established in his love, that love then overflows out of us into that relationship. Further in the verse, it says to know this love. If we really know how wide, how long, how high and how deep his love is, then we can share that love with our relationships, in our relationships. When we know something good, we want to share it, right? So if we know his love, we want to share that love with the people that we are in relationship with. And that therefore means when we want to take our relationships with people deeper, we first need to go deeper with God. When we do this, we are able to overcome the fear of being hurt. We're able to overcome the fear of rejection because even if we are hurt, even if we do get rejected, we are anchored in Christ. We are anchored in his love and we know that even if we're hurt, we can take that to him and know that we are fully loved by him. In Romans chapter 12, verses 9 to 10, it says, Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honour one another above yourselves. I want to quickly read to you the New Living Translation version because I think it puts it so plainly but so beautifully. It says, don't just pretend that you love others. Really love them. Hate what is wrong. Stand on the side of the good. Love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honouring each other. Love is genuine. Superficial, it's not genuine. Love is raw. It's real. It requires us to actually be honest and open with the person that we are in relationship with. Further in that verse, it says, being devoted to one another in love. Love requires our action. In the NLT, it said, with genuine affections. 
That's talking about our actions. We not only have to tell people that we love them, but we actually have to show that we love them through our actions. And we need to honour the other above ourselves. So often we get trapped in thinking that it's all about me, 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 me. But relationships are actually about the other person. It's about the other person's needs. It's about really loving on the other person, not about what I get out of it. So we need to honour the other person. In a moment, we're going to pray. We're going to ask for God to highlight a relationship with someone, whether it be with a family member, whether it be with a friend, or whether it even be your relationship with God. But we're going to ask him to highlight someone that you need to move to a deeper level with that you need to come out of the shallow end of the pool and take a leap of faith and go deeper. So right now, just so that there's no distractions around you, I ask that you close your eyes and let's just ask God to reveal that person to you. Lord, I thank you. I thank you that you are good and I thank you that you are love. I thank you that you love us unconditionally. But right now, Lord, I just ask that you would reveal the name of a relationship, whether it be family, whether it be friends, whether it be our relationship with you, but that you would reveal that relationship right now to each of us, that you would put the name on our hearts. All right. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15, this is what it says. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. As we as the body of Christ grow to be more like him, grow to love more like him, we can begin to transform our relationships to also show and share that same love, to grow, to be like he did relationships. So with that in mind, I want to pray again. And I want to ask God to reveal a specific step or a specific action that you can take this week to go deeper in that relationship that he has just highlighted to you. Now, I know we're in a bit of a weird season. We are currently in lockdown, so that does make things a little bit more difficult. But it might be that he puts on your mind to give them a phone call or to schedule a Zoom call with them or to just reach out to them in some way. But whatever this action step looks like, can I encourage you, be really brave and take that step. So let's just ask God for a specific step that you can take this week. So again, let's pray. God, I thank you for the name that you have placed on our hearts. I thank you that you are a God who wants to go deeper with us and help us go deeper with that person. Right now, I just ask that you would place on our hearts a specific step or a specific action that we can take to begin going deeper with this person, whether it's you, whether it's family, whether it's friend. God, right now, would you reveal a specific step to go deeper with that person? Lord, would you give us the courage to step out, to take this next step? Lord, would you fill us with your love so that we can overflow that love into our relationships? Would you help us take off the mask, tear down the walls, break off the fear, Lord, that we would be able to take this step to go deeper in relationship with whoever it is that is on our hearts. 
Thank you, Lord, in your name. Amen. Can I challenge you to really make the effort to action what it is that God has laid on your heart? If you're struggling with the fear, the fear of being vulnerable, the fear of being hurt, or just whatever God's put on your heart has absolutely terrified you, please tell someone that you trust allow them to journey this with you, to pray with you and to stand with you. And if you need to contact someone at the church, that is absolutely okay as well. At the end of this, there'll be a slide that goes up with the email and phone number of the church office. So please feel free to give a call if that's something that would really help you out. I want to leave you with just my story of an occasion where I've struggled with this. I grew up with a friend who I'd known literally since I was a child and we've probably known each other 10 plus years. But they got to a point in our relationship where we actually started to drift apart and that was because, or I can see now that was because everything had been really, really surface level. We would catch up a little bit but we just, we stopped being completely open and honest with one another and then holding that stuff back and starting to put on a bit of a mask actually really started to hurt our relationship. We started to drift apart and it got to a point where I really couldn't take it anymore and I was really so stressed about it. And trust me, this took a lot of courage and a lot of psyching myself up for many weeks. But eventually I built up the courage to go and speak to her. And we just went out for coffee and I just laid everything that was on my heart out to her. I was terrified. I was shaking. I was a mess. But I just told her how I was feeling. And with that, she actually opened up to me and reciprocated that. And we were able to talk about everything that had been going on, be completely vulnerable and open with one another. And that then led to our relationship being stronger than it had ever been before. So it is such a beautiful thing when we can go deeper with people. And I really encourage you to make that step. Well, I hope you have a blessed week and we'll see you next week. Your blood flows through